Welcome to the Sports Betting Preview Show, a pregame.com podcast. I'm your host, Marco D'Angelo, joined with my partner in crime, Vegas Runner. This is segment two. We're going to take a look at Phoenix and the Lakers, Western Conference Finals. Now, we're taping on Tuesday, so game one has been played. And what we're going to do is kind of set the stage for you of what we saw from game one, what our takeaway is, and maybe what we can expect moving forward in the rest of this series. Vegas Runner, uh, you know, last night, the Lakers, you know, both teams came off long layoffs. You know, they both were 4-0 sweeps. Um, the Western Conference Finals weren't starting until, you know, yesterday, Monday, so they sat for a long time. The Lakers come out and pretty much went pillar to post against Phoenix. Very fast-paced, up-tempo game. Defense was not there yesterday. At all, for either team. What was your takeaway from game one, and what? Do you, how did you see it? I'll tell you what I saw, and what do you think moving forward? The big difference, I thought, last night's game was, I think the final score was a bit deceiving based on the fact Lakers were hitting shots, man. I mean, they couldn't miss. And I thought Phoenix was playing well, especially in the first half. Even though they went into the half, you know, behind, I I thought they played well considering the Lakers weren't missing. I mean, when a team comes out and shoots lights out, there's only so much you could do. And if you could hang around long enough, eventually, you know, those percentages start to come back to normal. If you're going to, you know, you're a 45% field goal shooting team, you shoot 65% and a half. You know, the probabilities are in the second half, you're going to come out and shoot a lot worse. So I thought in the second half, Suns might have a shot. But Lakers just didn't get cold at all. And uh, the biggest difference that that showed to me was that the size as far as second chance opportunities. I mean, Lakers are just so big inside. Uh, They had, Suns had some success penetrating because Nash is so good with the basketball. If it was another point guard... Lakers would have annihilated them because they wouldn't have been able to get inside. But Nash will get you to ball inside. He'll get Stoudemire, you know, easy baskets underneath like he did. But the truth is, Marco, after seeing that game, Lakers are going to go to the NBA Finals. They're going to represent the West. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind. Probability tells us there's about a history, that is. There's an 85% chance, 84 point something that the Lakers will advance when the home team wins game one in the semis. Um, The adjusted series price is minus 540. To turn a profit lane minus 540, you have to win over 85% of your games. So So the odds makers got it right. There's no value on the Lakers right now in the adjusted price. There's no value on Phoenix either. But I really don't think Phoenix has any answers for the Lakers. They might make this a series, possibly take it six games. You know, because they'll they'll be tough at home. Phoenix is a good team, but I, I don't think they'll be able to beat this team four times. Okay. My take from last night is in one, I did have the Lakers last night, so I I cashed the game one. And my thinking behind it is really what I saw. And I felt all along, with both teams having the long layoff that the layoff was going to be a huge advantage for the Lakers and a major disadvantage for Phoenix. And my thinking behind that was Phoenix was on a roll. The Lakers, although they swept Utah, they had a struggle in the series before that. Phoenix has played good straight through. Phoenix has only had two bad games. The first game in which Portland, yeah. Portland and I think they just went into that game. Right, right. They were totally overconfident because Portland just lost Brandon Roy and that whole deal. And then the, Day that the emotional game. Right. Um, I felt having the layoff broke the momentum for Phoenix. That's one. The Lakers, you know, they had some nagging injuries. Let's face it. Kobe's been banged up most of the year. I mean, there's, what body part has any heart this yeah, year? Yeah, and the rest, you saw what it did to him yesterday. And right. even Odom, who's older now, you saw he had a spring in his step. Yeah, I agree with Odom you. Odom had a monster first half you. in the game. You touched upon it the first half. The Lakers shot over 60% from the floor in the first half last night. And yet, 
Phoenix was only down seven at the half. Right. Um, the continuity, the, the turnovers that Phoenix had, again, that goes to having your momentum broke from the layoff and the fact that whenever you're not shooting the percentage that the Lakers are shooting and you're playing a team that has tremendous size advantage on you, you're not going to get rebounds. And, and the thing is, with the Lakers hitting those shots, Phoenix wasn't able to play their transition-style game because you have to take the ball in from out of bounds. Right. It gives the Lakers a chance to get back on defense, set up on defense, where Phoenix's strength is quick rebound, throw it out the half court, get it underneath it. as quick as you can. And, and I like that you say that because the second thing I'm going to say, and people listening to this are going to look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, I believe this firmly. Even though the Lakers won easily last night in a running game, the Lakers can... They do not want to run against no. this team. No. Do they do not want to run? If right. they play that style right. seven games, Phoenix will make a series of this. Of it. You're I, right. I guarantee it. You know what? You're so right, man. I, I'm glad you said that because I actually said that to myself when I watched the first two minutes of the game. And Phoenix ran right out of the gate. I mean, Nash was running up and down like crazy trying to get it underneath. And you saw the Lakers, when they had a chance to slow it down, they took every opportunity to do that. Like, you could tell they were trying to even fight against themselves because they enjoy running as well, I think. But I, I think Phil Jackson was trying to get it in their heads that, yeah, maybe we can beat this team running and enjoying ourselves, but why not make it easy on ourselves right. and make them uncomfortable? And I think moving forward, you're going to end up getting some value in some of these games where the Lakers are going to put it on lockdown. You're going to get the triangle come into play yeah. and slow this game down. There's going to be value on the unders, trust me. And the Lakers do not want to run with this team. And you said it. If they didn't hit the high percentage yeah. of shots that they hit, and you know, Phoenix miss, you take Phoenix, you know, a couple percentage points up, and you take you know, Lakers a couple down. Yeah, uh, they like, they gave up 35 points to the Lakers in the first quarter. You're not going to do that and win, right? And, and that's you know, and you get a you get that home crowd. You know, juiced. I mean, let's face it. Nobody likes to watch the you know the game in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they want to see. Up. Yeah, <laughs> they want to you know, see the running guy. Yeah. And when the Lakers came out and took that lead, I mean, the Staples Center was electric. Yeah, yeah. No question about it. But trust me, I've been doing this too long. Yeah, you're not going to get a hundred, two hundred and forty points scored in every game. And I you're, you're you. going to see the line. Be, be over adjusted, adjusted, and there's going to be value there. And coaches are going to make their so, adjustments. You're right. Those are our tips for you moving forward in this series. Again, we're taping on Tuesday, so only game one's in the in the books. So moving forward, I think we both agree, you know, the Lakers will move on to the NBA Finals, but I don't think this is going to be a, you know, a four sweep. sweep. No. no way. They'll make a series of this, and I think there's going to be tremendous value moving forward in some of the unders. I agree. Hey, that's going to wrap up uh, segment two. I'm Marco D'Angelo. He's Vegas Runner. Be sure to check out all of our podcasts. You can download and listen at iTunes. Just search pregame.com. Get all of our podcasts. Take us with you. Listen to us when you're doing whatever, working out or you know, Marco wouldn't at the be poker working out. Tables. Yeah, that I'll be there. I won't be working. You can work out. I'll be at, at the, the poker, poker tables. tables. So, he's Vegas runner Marco D'Angelo. We'll be back with segment three.